from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcaster who's, you know, I'm trying to make things cozy, but I also want to give a shout out to Cozy the dog or any pets named Cozy or any Cozies, that, like anything, like anybody named Cozy or Cozies in general that might be listening. You say, well, I'm a tea, co- well, I'm a coffee Cozy. And I'd say, well, interesting. Are you, well, I, yeah, I probably got to get to, this is just a, a bit, uh, it's time for the podcaster that tries to make things cozy and shouts out cozies at the same time. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And uh, Sleep With Me is here for you, but if you need something more right now, if you're having a tough time, make sure to, sh- to check our show notes. Uh, there's links to organizations uh, that you can take steps uh, to get more help uh, right in our show notes. And Sleep With Me believes that black lives matter, and I believe that uh, you should take some steps to support the black members of our community. So there'll be uh, links to, to that in the show notes as well, as well as our sponsors who are who and who are whom, whom are who, uh, who our sponsors who enable us to bring you this podcast uh, twice a week for free. Uh, thanks so much. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about a sponsor that I'm missing so much. Oh, am I missing my Helix bed? I'm out of town right now. I'm on the road and no mattress can compare, whether it's a guest bed in a family member's home or one of those fancy hotel mattresses. They do not compare to my Helix mattress because my Helix mattress is matched to my body type and my sleep preferences. And if you take the Helix quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep, you you, and maybe you and your partner could take it together. You could all get matched with a mattress that meets the needs you have. That's the perfect mattress for you or for both of you. Because why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. And Helix Sleep Squiz it takes just two minutes to complete. They know everybody's unique. So they have different models to choose from. They have soft mattresses, medium, and firm. And if you're like Scoots, they have mattresses that are great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. There's even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size folks. And I took the Helix because I was matched with the Helix at dusk. It keeps me cool. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. It keeps me comfortable. It's just a perfect firmness for me. I love seeing what other listeners get matched with and seeing their unboxing videos when you found the Helix mattress of your dreams. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress you're matched to. It comes right to your door, shipped for free. Not only that, Helix is so awesome, you don't have to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. So get over there to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. And Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash sleep for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Thanks, everybody. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Have you tried the Name Your Price tool yet? It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleep Base Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you to hear. It's where I pop my peas. If you please, I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. That's really how we're able to be here for you for free twice a week. The listeners who support the sponsors and let the sponsors know about it. And tonight I want to thank Joan B. and Joan B.'s family for supporting Brooklyn and Relief Band. Joan got three sets of sheets from Brooklyn and a Relief Band. Joan, make sure to fill out the form at Sleep With Me 
MLBpodcast.com slash sponsor so I can send you some stickers and stuff. And thank you so much. And I hope those sheets treat you and your family well when you're sleeping at night and that relief band comes in handy when you're out on the road. Thank you, Joan. If you want to be a part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, let a sponsor know you supported them. Let me know about it. Fill out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors and I can try to thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. I might even get you some stickers or something even cooler. But thank you, Joan. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. There's links to resources in the show notes. It's also about supporting the members of our community, saying Black Lives Matter with our actions, saying stop AAPI hate with our actions. There's links to organizations where you can get started being a part of positive change in our show notes. And I'm looking for organizations to to support. So if you have an organization you're excited about, whether it's super local or international, let me know about that organization and let me know what it does and let me know how I can find out more so I can check it out and maybe make it a part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Thanks, everybody. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Posty poster song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and you see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own facebook group keith stacy sarah julie and jennifer these are your moderators get support dear scooter on patreon buy the merch and support the sponsors Thanks, Mystery Bard. Uh, Let's try to slow it down now and get on with the show. Uh, Hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, uh, whether it's thoughts, feelings, uh, physical sensations, uh, changes in time or temperature. Maybe like so things on your mind that you're thinking about, obviously, because I just started thinking there. Like, it literally was trying to talk to you, and I apologize. That's why I wanted to bring it up. I'm sorry. My thoughts I, my thoughts started thinking when I was trying to talk and pay attention to you. And it's not fair. You know, it's uh, it happened, so I wanted to acknowledge it and sa- tell you what I was thinking of was what I was going to— this, this thing said, uh, hey, by the way, w- what are we going to record tomorrow? And I said, is that not a metaphor for everything in my entire life? Uh— and they said, well, you're right. What are we going to record tomorrow? I said, well, we've definitely got to. Re-. And I said, yeah, I know. I, I know. And I said, well, I don't, we don't have it scheduled yet. I know we have to record tomorrow, but I don't. And I said, well, uh, here's what I'm thinking. And then I started listening. And then I realized, I said, wait a second. I'm trying to record a podcast intro and I'm talking. Excuse me. But uh, I'll have to, you know, maybe later we could talk about this. Uh, future recording brain so it happens to me like not just at bedtime but more so at bedtime so whether it's something you're thinking about that catches your attention something you're feeling emotionally or experiencing or physically or it could be something else you know it could be something temporary you could have just woke up uh hey what's up uh i'm here to help uh, so um whatever time it is uh, whether you need a daytime break or extra noise, you know, you're working, you know, you got the Zoom life going. I heard that was the least popular hashtag. Uh, well, there's two, like, uh, in my opinion, an, an imaginary hashtag ranker.com 
don't Google that because it, it's imaginary. Uh, but I just, it's a very, like, I don't have the whole list, but the bottom two were Zoom Life, L-I-F-E, and Zoom Life with a Y. That was out of, uh, this is only a 10, 10 part list and nine and 10. Believe it or not, uh, not in that list is Zuba Life because it's not relevant. Zuba pants were a form of pants that I've talked about on the podcast before. I think they were in, and I don't know what the original, uh, I don't know their origin story, actually. I didn't see the prequel, Zuba, the prequel. But when I was aware of Zuba pants, uh, they were, um, what, is the, what are those animals called? Zebra style pants, but in colors of NFL teams. Which would be interesting, like if you were the Broncos, um, maybe not, because I guess a Bronco and a zebra. But if you were the Bengals, you'd say, no, the Bengals, they have good colors, though. Raiders, that was probably the most popular Zuba pant. Uh, but you see, like, because uh, if they're silver and black, you know, what would probably make a nice one is the Chargers, because those are nice. I, I find those soothing colors. But so, oh boy, how did we get here? So, whatever's keeping you awake, uh, whatever, I'm here to take your mind off stuff uh, and keep you company. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. So I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. I'm going to use a lot of filler words. And I'm not going to make a lot of sense. I'm going to, yeah, pop culture things from 20 years ago are going to pop in my mind. And then I'm going to forget what, forgetting what I was talking about. Holy backtracking, prequel, inventing prequels and words and uh, listicles. Uh, I don't know if that was a listicle. Is a listicle a partial list? Uh, it, like, because that was a listicle. Because I said, well, you only told us in 9, 10, and uh, 32, Zuba Life. Uh, also zoo tycoon life, uh, that one is, didn't even make the list. So if you, cause you say, well, that game is, uh, I said, well, at least I'm getting pop, like I'm trying to cover every decade with uh, shout outs. So if you're new, welcome. I do want to give you some extra information if you're new and you're here. I really hope this podcast can help you. But I also understand if you're having a reaction, because I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night and use creaky, dulcet tones. So you say, well, I'm not sure about your voice or your personality and uh, or this what you're taught. And I say, yeah, that's a very natural reaction. How is this supposed to put me to sleep? Those are very natural reactions. Now, I have uh, hundreds of thousands of people that are also listening that are regular listeners that say, believe me, I felt that way, too. So everyone shares your skepticism or your unsurety. I don't know what the right word is. Uh, tentative, like tentative feelings, I would say. Usually they're stronger than tentative because it, why wouldn't you be skeptical or doubtful? Like this, uh, you see a podcast of hoping to sleep with creaky dulcet tones and somebody talking about Zuba pants and uh, whatever the other ones he said, uh, Zoom life, uh, Oh, what I was trying to make my point about Zoom life was a lot of people have been using the podcast as background noise. Uh, if you have multiple to give you a layer, so you say, "Well, I'm not. I don't want to listen to that chalkboard session in the other room." And then the kids at those in those families, their teachers say, "Is that your? Is that your? Uh, if, 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 like a male parental figure? Like with those creaky dolls? Is that a creaky door?" Or a human chattering on and on and on. Is that a dr Do you live in? Is that a drone going by? No, just a droner or drone. I'm a drony. So okay, so those are things. Uh, oh, so if you're new, I want to. If you're doubtful, of course, a couple of things to know. Not right up front because that's too late. It, it, that can throw people off. One. This podcast is best consumed loosely, like barely pay attention. If you're in a position where you're waiting for me to get started or get to the point, I understand that natural, uh, you say, well, that's how most things happen. 
this one is a bit like you, you like you may find yourself having stronger feelings. Just kind of barely listen to me. A bit like, uh, uh, you know, you're like, wait a second, you, like you already know me. I could tell you, you could already tell your judgment's right. This person is not really making a whole lot of sense. So, so you say, well, let me just kind of barely listen to him. I mean, I do kind of understand Zoom life, and I understand I like the sound of Zuba pants. And actually, if there was ever a time for Zuba pants to come back, uh, as long as they were at a discount, because I think when they were popular, you know, they were probably like 20 30 40 bucks. But you'd say, uh, like, if they were like $12, they're kind of like lounge pants, you know? You say, well, that's perfect for my Zoom life. Well, Zuba pants and Zoom life. Uh, and uh, Zoom, uh, in the, I go from Zoom life to Zumba in my Zuba pants all day long. Zuba pants. Uh, Two for one. Uh, so nice. Scoot said it more than twice. Okay, so if you're new, just don't pay. If you can, just pay, barely pay attention to me. Just kind of like hold me like you're holding a, stand, a handful of uh, beach sand and let me slowly drift through your fingers. The other thing is that I'm not really here to put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company as you drift off. That's why the show is over an hour is so you have plenty of time to fall asleep. So there's no pressure on you to be like, okay, I got to fall asleep soon. And if you can't sleep, I'll be here to the very end. So either way, I'm going to be talking and tonight I'll be recovering an 80s movie and trying to remember what I can remember about it. Uh, and but so if you can't sleep, I'll be here to the very end. But you, you say, well, I don't really need to hear you try to remember a movie plot. So, yeah, so those are a couple of things. You know, the other thing is for new people that can throw them off is the structure of the show. So I'll give you a quick, I'll try to do a quick overview of our, of our structure, then I'll explain it. Show starts off with a greeting, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary, uh, so that you feel welcome and warm and seen or cool. You say, well, I feel, it feels breezy in a good way. And I say, great. Uh, then there's business. That's how we keep the show coming out for free twice a week instead of being behind a paywall. Then there's an intro. The intro is about uh, 12 to 20 minutes long. And between the business being up front and then the intro kind of feeling like uh, it's uh, an intro, the never, never-ending intro, uh, the, like it can throw new listeners off naturally, but the, 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 the all serves a purpose. Then there's business, then there's our story or our recap or our misremembering of uh, Eddie, a classic Eddie Murphy movie uh, where, yeah, I guess I get into it in that movie. I see, man, like Eddie, where Eddie Murphy showed a, a, a lot of range in a non-dramatic role. So, uh, like, and then there'll be thank you. So, so that's the structure of the show. And, uh, oh, so, oh, so why is the structure that way? Well, uh, the greetings there. So you feel welcome. The business is there. So I don't have to give it to another company. And then, uh, the intro, the reason the intro is around 12 to 20 minutes long, instead of me just saying, you, you welcome to the sleep podcast, bada bing, bada boo. Uh, Zoom, then saying thank you, Zoom, brought to you by Zumba Pants and Zoom and uh, Zoom, Zumba Classes and Zebras uh, is, uh, and now you're going to go to sleep. Like that just doesn't, has never worked for me or a lot of the listeners. You say, well, those kind of things maybe worked for me once, but then as, as my, I got I adapted to them and then they never worked again. And then I was having trouble sleeping again. What I found with this show is that this the intro kind of eases you into bedtime. So some listeners start it while they're getting ready for bed. Some listeners start it while they're in bed. And then some start it after they've gotten comfortable so that you get some distance from the day. Like you could be unwinding or you could start it when you're already unwound and ready to go to sleep. Or podcasts are totally free. So you could, there's 2% of people that started at 20, 22 minutes. So you could just kind of see how it goes and go from there. 
Uh, but uh, th- so that's why the intro is so long. And for a new listener, it's like I'm trying to gr- gr- greet you and give you an idea of what to expect. And you kind of get an honest idea of the kind of nonsense and non I don't know if it's a non sequiturs, but something like that. Uh, that we'll be dealing with. So hopefully that makes sense. And yeah, and then then we'll talk about us. I'll, I'll try to remember the, this movie that meant so much to me. And then the show ends with thank yous because uh, it's very important to me to thank. Uh, to, I don't know. I just like having that. Uh, so that's the structure of the show. The other thing to know is the reason I make the show. And the reason I make a show is twofold. One of the reasons is because I, I believe you deserve a good night's sleep. Uh, I believe you des- you have you deserve a safe place where you could drift off. And I believe that the world will be a better place if you're rested. And that's really important to me because uh, it just will be. I mean, it's just a fact. If you're in a little bit better place, the world's in a better place. And you can live your life fuller. And you say, well, then I'm not as tired tomorrow. That's pretty good. And the other side of it is, is I've been there. That's the other reason I make this show, because I know how it feels in the deep, dark night. Uh, tossing, turning, Zoom light, you know, or during the day having Zoom life. You say, okay, what? Uh, one second, I'm just, in, you know, I'm also on a Zoom thing. Uh, so you say, wow, this is, this is, uh, like, uh, so it's, it's not easy is what I'm saying. And if I can help, uh, it's my honor because I, I know how it feels after dark. And I don't know, not the cinematics kind of after dark, the kind of after dark where you're tossing, turning, mind racing, not, you know, not the kind they say after dark, uh, I mean, maybe like uh, if they're saying it like about some sort of dessert product, I probably know you say, well, no, I've tried that after dark, uh. Ice cream after dark? Yeah, I know that, but not the not after dark. Uh, our special programming. That's how they used to do that in the 80s and the 90s, too. So uh, that's why I make the show. You deserve a good night's sleep. I'd like to help uh, because I, I know what it feels like in the deep, dark night. I think that's it. I'm glad you're here. I really hope. I mean, I work really hard. You're a nice driver. I really want to help you fall asleep. I appreciate you coming by and checking this show now. Show out. Uh, and uh, here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring it to you twice a week. Thanks. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. And Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh, too. You've heard me talk about them. And so that gives them a wider array of meal plans to choose from. There's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands. And now Sleep With Me listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount from the show. And right now, I think one of the best things about HelloFresh is that it saves time and stress. HelloFresh offers convenient, contact-free delivery right to your doorstep for easy home cooking with your family. The recipes are easy to follow and quick to make so you get more time with the people you love there's steps and pictures to guide you along the way so you can learn new recipes you can teach your children or your partners or your friends to cook and you don't got to worry about going to the grocery store because hellofresh cuts out the stressful meal planning and trips to the store so you can get cooking and enjoy it and have it dinner on the table in 30 minutes or less and one of my favorite recent uh hellofresh recipes is uh, the uh, sun-dried tomato and baked basil spaghetti. Holy cow. And a couple of the secret ingredients in there, there was basil, tomatoes, and sun-dried tomatoes, obviously, but there was almonds and cream cheese. Uh, Holy mackerel. Absolutely delicious. And then a pop and basil on top. And that's just one of the many amazing meals I've made with HelloFresh. So think about it. What are you going to make for dinner? And is it going to be as easy and as fun as with HelloFresh? Go to HelloFresh.com slash Fort 
14 sleep and use the code 14 sleep for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's hellofresh.com slash 14 sleep and use code 14 sleep for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's hellofresh.com slash 14 sleep. Use 14 sleep and get over there and sign up with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kits. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about that game I'm playing. You know, playing in the sand is great, but then you got the sand in the mud. Playing in the rain, you know, probably good for about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. And then there's, you know, those outdoor activities. But sometimes in the summertime, you just want to kick back and chill and give your brain that summertime feeling all year long. And you could do that with Best Fiends. Oh, boy, do I love playing Best Fiends. I love competing with my family members. My mom downloaded Best Fiends. Best Fiends is way more fun than other puzzle matching games out there. It's one of those puzzle games where the time just flies by and it's totally free to download. There's thousands of puzzles to solve. There's something new every single day. I'm in the levels of 200. I think my daughter's like in, I don't know, five or 600. I have no idea how far ahead of me she is. I just love how every time I open Best Fiends, there's something new new and fun to try out. And I could play it at the beach. I can play it while I'm waiting for a bus or waiting for a plane, while you're waiting to be seated at a restaurant, while you're waiting to meet up with somebody. Best Fiends makes the time flying by. And most of the time, I just play it because I want to. I want to relax. I want something fun, engaging, popping colors, memorable characters. The character, you know, I love Quincy. That's the most adorable character on Best Fiends, in my opinion. Best Fiends keeps me on my toes. Like recently, they had this ice cream race. I love Love how they constantly are thinking up new, fun, seasonal things. But the really part, fun part of Best Fiends is how you strategically team up with each character based on their special abilities to gain extra points and items to level up your fiends. There's just so much to love about this game. Give it a try and let me know if you love it as much as I do. Download the five-star rated puzzle game Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. And then let me know about it. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's uh, Scoots, of course. I'm here, and I'm ta- oh, tonight I'm going to talk. It's going to be a tale of the tape, and recently, well, it's a few months ago for me, I recorded an episode about a movie theater. So I guess you'll be hearing this a few months after that, but I'm not positive when you'll be hearing this. But I talked about a, this, this second-run movie theater that had, had a huge place in my life. And maybe I've done this movie before, but I, I can't picture it. Uh, I mean, now they've done over 900, probably recorded like 930 episodes. Uh, maybe I have. So maybe, I don't know, maybe this would just be a bonus uh, of me trying to remember. But this also happened with the uh, um, Princess Bride where I said, I thought I did this already. But then I said, well, I kind of didn't. But this is like one of the movies that uh, really has a lot of meaning for me. I really love this movie. It's been a few years since I rewatched it. I'm pretty sure I rewatched it since I entered adulthood or sobriety in 2013, but maybe not. I remember watching it pre those days, but on a day when I was just kind of kicking back, uh, I guess taking a break between wedding events for one of my brother's weddings. So I don't know if this was in the turn or the aughts, uh, but uh, so I remember watching this movie then, and I'm pretty sure I've seen it since then. It is rated R, so I'm not sure. Don't worry, though, if you're a kid listening. don't. Oh, boy, don't worry. But I just love this movie, and it is a movie that, uh, I don't know. So, so I guess I'll get into it and see where things go. The name of the movie is uh, it's original Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, as with most movies that I talk about, I have no idea when it came out. It was somewhere between 1987 or 6 and 1992. Though I'm guessing at the end of the 80s, 89, 88 or 89. I do wonder how well this movie stands up, but and uh, there are, I mean, I guess the movie is probably like there probably are problematic things that I'm not remembering, but the movie is a little bit about race and, and systemic racism. So, uh, like, uh, I wonder, I don't know, I wonder how that's portrayed. I, I just like because uh, it's been a long time. 
So we'll have to see. Uh, like, uh, hopefully, usually the last few times I've rewatched the movie after I've recorded these. I would like to watch it with my daughter. And I, I don't know where this lands in, like, because uh, I'm not good with dates. But I would, like, if I had to say my personal opinion is, like, this is probably... And maybe, again, it's just memory, but one of Eddie Murphy's best performances and actually where he he probably doesn't get enough credit for the amount of range that he shows in a movie. And one of the main reasons is he's a little bit, for most of this movie, I don't know, I really, because I can picture it vividly in my mind, he has to do a lot of, uh, he has to have a lot more range and it's a comedic action role and I guess for a lot of us I mean I know he did Metro I remember seeing that I don't remember much about it but it was like uh and I don't know if there was two or three Beverly Hills Cops movies um I think I, I was old enough to see two in the movie theater but one I was definitely not maybe not even two or maybe two they made into a PG-13 movie but I'm again not sure on any of this stuff uh, but a couple of reasons why this movie was a big deal. One, it was R, so I didn't see it for a while. Two, it was a very different Eddie Murphy than the Eddie Murphy of the late 80s and the 90s. Uh, like he's in 48 Hours, which I think was before this, and it kind of started to show his range. Uh, his character was similar and different in some ways in, in that movie. It showed his confidence. I guess maybe that's part of it is that, it, like, it, like, it was almost, you'd say, you wouldn't use understated in Eddie Murphy, especially 80s, early 90s, in a lot of things. But this was almost an understated role, comparatively, because he, he was just playing a cop. Uh, and, I don't know, I, really, I, I, I just really think very, very highly of this film. So I'm hoping when I rewatch it, I like retain that. And I guess you could check with me before you rewatch it and say, Scoots, should we rewatch it? Is it uh, like, like, especially those of you that are younger that have never seen it, or maybe you're more familiar with uh, the kind of overstop Ed, Eddie Murphy comedies of the aughts and then uh, like, um, uh, where Eddie Murphy was playing more characters and like makeup based roles and, and, uh, CGI. I mean, this was a very young Eddie Murphy, but a very handsome, suave, uh, but again, understated, casual, suave, I would say, uh, role. And, it, uh, I don't know. So skin, like almost like a softer leading man. I don't know. For me, you say this is the like strangest thing you've ever said, but a very relatable. Uh, and I would say much more like I would put it up against a movie that like uh, was in a similar time frame of a of a cop uh, like in detective investigating, which would be Fletch. And I wonder what I know the Fletch source material we had at work, so I know that's based on a book. I don't know if Beverly Hills Cop was. But uh, this one is much more straightforward, and it's very funny. Uh, but it, uh, it, I don't know, it, it's not forcing the humor forward, and it is like a little bit of a social commentary for the '80s, though. I don't know. Again, since I haven't seen it in a while, I don't know how deep about racism and classism. So, so if you haven't watched it, it's a movie called Beverly Hills Cap. It came out in the eighties. That's kind of all I remember. The reason it's, I mean, so oh, the reasons why it's so important to me. So in, so I saw it in the, uh, I don't know when I saw it. Maybe years after it came out because it was R, and I was a kid, so it was definitely a no no. Though now thinking, remembering the movie, I'm, I'm wondering why it was R. Maybe strong language. Maybe I mean, it definitely has some action sequences, but nothing like w- what uh, a superhero. I mean, there's a superhero movies probably have a lot more stuff going on. 
I mean, I do know that uh, a lot of super or a lot of eighties and nineties movies do have a lot stronger language because, uh, like, uh, then I don't know. I, I feel like I was just like, holy cow. I don't know. Maybe there were some other adult sequences. It's stuff for me to remember. So okay, so the movie takes place. It opens in in, in a very uh, structural way. Very similar to popular, really well done movies today. It opens uh, very fast, and that's a plus. And it opens getting to know our hero and putting him in a situation. And again, what do they? I forgot what they call those. Uh, I don't know. Is it a set piece? But it opens very, very quickly. So. Eddie Murphy is is a police officer in Detroit, a detective. I guess he's a uh, he's a detective, uh, like uh, and because uh, I said, well, is he what is he detecting? But in the beginning of the movie, what he's detecting is uh, people who like who would buy a truckload of uh, uh, what do you call those? Ca- not counterfeit cigarettes. Oh, this was so. This was also a time where everybody smoked. Uh, even I, I don't know if they smoked on screen in this movie. That was already starting to lose traction. But cigarettes were a lot bigger deal, and they had uh, they still have a lot of taxes on them. Back then, they probably had less. They don't call them counterfeit. What do you call it when you bring someone smuggled, a cigarette smuggler? So, so he was on, he wasn't, he was, I think he was posing as a cigarette smuggler. And again, none of this may be accurate. So Eddie Murphy was on his own. He was undercover, so he's an undercover detective, and he, so he's pretending to, I think he was pretending to be the seller. And he's, I'm sure he was working his way up an organization, right? Because he was trying to get to the bottom of uh, who was buying this or who was selling it. So I don't know. I'm pretty sure he was a seller, but because he's just so, he's so funny, like playing these kind of like roles, I feel like he's improving, like that he's really a detective and he's improving like being undercover. So he's trying to set up a deal and he's really close to, uh, to, to making the deal happen and catching, catching the, 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 the smugglers or the smugglees. Uh, and it's a whole truck of cigarettes. So, and why would you smuggle cigarettes? You say, and I say, well, taxes. So, so I would assume I, I, these were questions that probably came up as a kid that I had to figure out. Um, so if they were in Michigan, maybe the cigarettes were from a state uh, or from Canada where there was less taxes. And they said, well, we could sell these for much lower. Uh, so I guess like maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a tale, maybe there's a message in there. No representation without taxation, like people. Come on, no smoke, no exhalation without some taxation. Um, but so I don't remember what goes wrong. I can kind of remember. I, I think he was like, uh, maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just observing because I think he had like a red. So and also talk about being ahead of times. I mean, people say that. Uh, the old uh, uh, social network was the one that invented wearing hoodies, uh, like hooded sweatshirts, especially zip-up hoodies. But holy cow, Eddie Murphy was rocking a hoodie sweatshirt through this whole movie. I think in the beginning of the movie, a red one. And then I guess Trading Places is a pretty big range. But the, the Trading Places, again, is a little bit... Uh, that just popped in my head because I think that's where he has a red hooded sweatshirt. But he has a blue one or a black one through most of this film. And it also reminds me of Adam Sandler for some reason. Because you know Adam Sandler is like constantly casually dressed. Uh, and he kind of says, yeah, this is like I get to, like uh, this is, I'm wearing what's comfortable. So I don't know if that was a big deal at the time where like as a lead of this film. I mean, I guess Eddie Murphy really looks stylish, uh, especially in this film, in anything. But so, so well, what I'm saying is, like, uh, don't let it, don't get it twisted that Zucker, Zuckerberg was a, in first person wear a hooded sweatshirt of uh, 
you know, that fame. It was Eddie Murphy in, uh, uh, was this movie called Beverly Hills Cap? Oh, I forgot to f- fill in. Well, I talked about it in another episode, but why this movie was so important. We'll get back to the sequence. Uh, we'll be back to, to the movie soon. But so the reason it was so important. So where, so by my house was this theater, a Genesee Theater. And I think that's what it was called. Uh, yeah, it was in the, yeah, so Genesee Theater. And it showed second run movies. And it was by my house. It was also by, in a plaza where we would go a lot is we would go, we didn't go grocery shopping at this plaza, but uh, a couple of things we would go to. There was a bakery there where you could buy uh, individual size pizza doughs. They were kind of like pizzas. They were half baked. And we would, uh, for a lot of birthday parties, we would buy these little pizza rounds and then everybody would get to make their own pizza. And you felt like you did something. And it was pretty cool. And then there was a used bookstore and magazine store that uh, we would go to, at least me, my brother, my my dad, maybe my sister. And me and my brother would go there and get old mad magazines and cracked magazines. And we would, like, literally, I guess this is, I guess maybe did I talk, I guess maybe I talked about that in the episode. One of my happiest memories. And then I think we went there one time with somebody else who said, look at there's adult, there's like uh, magazines that kids aren't supposed to look at right by these kids' magazines. Uh, and they became a little bit distracting because they said, because you could go there. I mean, this was really a used book. And I don't know if they had comics, uh, but we could buy Mad Magazines from like five to ten years earlier for nothing, including the specials. And it was just the greatest thing. And then we could read those all summer long or all break and cracked. Uh, and a lot of times we didn't even know. We didn't know what half the jokes meant. Sometimes there'd be a National Lampoons in there. Uh, but those are definitely from older kids. But the, the like they'd be like TV shows that would already been canceled uh, or that we didn't watch, like Magnum P.I., but maybe something like uh, that's canceled that we didn't watch. I don't know, like Falcon's Crest. But also that's where the theater was. And so, I, and I'm positive about this, but, you know, I've never looked it up to find out. But I'm pretty sure that at that movie theater, Beverly Hills Cop was at that movie theater. It felt like for a year. And to me, it's however old I was. I was like, this is the most, got to be the most successful movie in second run cinema of all time because it kind of felt like it was always there. Like other movies would be playing, but they'd have like a 10 o'clock showing on their sign out front and then on their newspaper ad every single week. And of course, cause I couldn't see the movie like uh, that. I guess that was uh, like, it's just always in, I said, this movie must be amazing. How come not everybody's talking about it? Like this should be on the, they should be leading on the news. And for some of you, that might sound over the top, but I'm not kidding. Like, I would have thought, like, they'd be like, yeah, this is, uh, who was that, Dan Rather uh, reporting. And we've got some stuff about oil and uh, other stuff, but we wanted to lead again with the, the Beverly Hills Cop Watch. It is still playing at the Genesee Theater. And, you know, second and first run theaters worldwide. It has generated, you know, billions of dollars and is the most beloved film, but it's still rated R, so kids can't see it. One day, when you're old enough to see it, it won't be in the theaters, but, you know, don't worry. Don't vet this thing called streaming. So I just watched a movie that was already the seed, you know, the forbidden fruit, uh, and when I actually tasted the fruit, it was not a letdown. And I think it was a while. And maybe it was that I saw Beverly Hills Cop 2 first and then saw this movie. And I was like, holy mackerel. And I'm pretty sure on the poster, it's like, oh, and he also had a like a, like kind of like a varsity jacket, uh, I think. Um, now that I'm picturing Eddie Murphy like sitting on the hood of a car just looking cool and I also accept the fact that all this could be wrong but so okay so back to the film so there Eddie Murphy is uh oh I almost had his name I forgot the character's name 
it'll be interesting me trying to remember anybody's name. It can hear his, his like, uh, what do they call that? His superintendent or whatever yelling at him. Oh, I almost had it. I think it's three syllables. Uh, well, some of you are already saying, Scoots, come on. Uh, Billy? Is that what it is? Billy Rydell? No, that can't be it. Uh, but so, no, Billy, is Billy the, uh, uh, well, anyway, um, so, okay. So he ma he's trying to make this deal and then something goes wrong. Something alerts the, the non, the, 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 the smugglers to the fact that he's on the job. And I'm not sure what it is. It wasn't his slip up, of course. It was someone else. Like maybe they're listening in or maybe. And then he even tries to ham that up. Like, uh, and he says, you know, try, almost pulls it off. But then, of course, there's an action sequence. And then we see, okay, whoa, so this movie's funny. And we have a hero, clearly. And our hero is very uh, confident and skilled, but also likable. And there's going to be action. So there's an action sequence with the, the truck, and he's in the back of the truck. I'm sure there's a car chasing behind and he's trying to defuse the situation, and eventually he does, and he succeeds. But he has to do it, of course, in a way that however he resolves things a lot of times is too over the top. Uh, so however he resolved it or whatever tactic, he uses some tactic, of course, that's not okay with the authority figures. And I'm not exactly sure what it was, but so he goes back to the office. Of course, he's like in with the like regular, like uh, other work working officers. And you can see that he's popular and, and has like a sense of uh, humor or whatever. Like they say, wow, you're, you're really somebody we look up to. But then his boss is very upset with him and his boss is like very, like uses you loud words because, you know, this was, I guess, an 80s trope. It's like, you know, the cop that can't follow the rules but gets it done with style. And th But this was uh, just, I don't know, like I said, this has had a little bit more range than those tropey movies. Um, and I think it was, I mean, personally, I think it was those softer moments, which gets followed up very quickly. And this, like, inquisitiveness, uh, I think with some other strong... Uh, of these detective comedy performances that I really like, there is no, like, it feels like a blank mask uh, where this character really felt like a human being. And it is because those softer moments, and it is like what happens is he, I think it's what happens, I don't remember. He goes back to his apartment and his buddy's there, or his buddy calls him to get dinner, get some drinks. Like his old friend he hasn't seen in a while. And none of this could be correct. No, I mean, none of this may be correct. But, it's a, like, at some point, I'm pretty sure he gets there with his friend. Oh, wow, I just remembered somebody. You know who's in this movie? Is uh, Oh, my gosh. Uh, holy cow. I just remember one of the characters in the movie, I'm pretty sure is uh, one of our friends from Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Uh, I'm, I'm now 99.9% .9 positive. But not 100%, because there is two sets of villains, uh, and then there's the villains, uh, Heavy or whatever, who is... Uh, ooh, we'll get to it. I'll look it up on Wikipedia to, to, to resolve some of these questions later. Okay, so 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 you didn't get getting so distracted. So he meets up with his friend, or, or yeah, yeah, he runs into his friend. I think his friend like is at his house, or his apartment, or they go out to dinner. And his friend says, uh, "They said, man, I haven't seen you in a while. What, you know, what'd you show up for?" And his friend says, "Well, you know, I miss you, man, and I love you." And his friend, now he's like. Uh, uh, Axel Foley, a a Axel Foley. You know, Bronson Pinchot is in this movie. I just rem remembered. Okay, so he he says he, so. Axel's the one that like uh, you know became a cat, made something. So this is his childhood friend. They couldn't get anything right. It's always in trouble. So he says, uh, 
what do you got going on? Uh, Mike, Mikey. So he says, what do you got going on? Uh, and he says, well, look, I found these things, uh, when I was working. I think this is what happens. Uh, and he says, you can't do that. You got to bring them back. And they're like, this is the thing. I'm thinking they're German bear bonds, uh, or ba- that's what I thought they were, bear bonds, uh, which is think of the same thing that happens in the movie Die Hard. But, uh, but I'm not, I guess we'll have to do that for the holidays. Yeah, I think that's what, like, and I, I thought they were bear bonds, bear, bear bonds, like the bearer of these bonds gets paid. And actually, I think they ha- take place in the Jason Bourne books when I was rereading those. But so he, uh, he says, oh boy. And I don't even know if it happens really fast or it takes a while. But, uh, all of a sudden, uh, the door opens and, uh, the, 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 the people that own the bearer bonds say, hey, these are our bearer bonds. They belong to our boss and Mikey you shouldn't have taken them. And it's Jonathan Banks, uh, beloved actor. Though, you, I mean, you'd be surprised. Uh, you say, whoa, holy cow. So he, they say, they speak strongly to Mikey in the Axel. And I think, uh, and he, they get, it happens fast. So Axel can't really re- react or something. And then they say, you're going to have to come with us, Mikey. And I think it's then Mikey goes to visit the, uh, the bit, he goes his his bear his his bear bond is checked cashed uh, he has he he's, he gets cashed as a bear bond. So then Axel says, "Well," and they they just take off. So he says, "What is this? How did these tough guys just show up?" And they had the bear. He sent they send my friend to cash his bond at the big bond bank in the sky. And they say, holy mackerel, I can't believe any of this. He says, he says, like, uh, so I think what happens is, you know, his interest is peaked. And again, these are the small moments when he's with his friend. And then he just says, something's not right here. You know, in addition to the fact he said, well, my friend stole this stuff from, I don't even know who these people are. And maybe he can't find his friend at first, but I'm pretty sure they say, well, you bring in, bringing this into the big farm. And so basically he, I think he goes and meets with his boss, uh, and he says his boss was already mad. And I, I don't know if he asked for permission or, or he just says, you know what, my, you know, my friend w- w- went to the big bank in the sky, so I got to take a break. Uh, I'm going to take a vacation. But his boss is already on to something. He says, well, just don't like, don't go do anything brash. Uh, he says, well, no, I'm going to take a break or go to California. And he calls, uh, I think he calls his friend Jenny, um, who I can't think of the, uh, it'll, it'll come to me, but, uh, and I don't know if he calls her or just goes there, but there's a couple sequences, of course, that I'm going to remember out of order, but they're so cool. So basically he, the next thing you know, he's in, um, he's in, uh, Beverly, like Los Angeles. And again, and this is the eighties. Uh, so if you think Hollywood and Los Angeles and Beverly Hills was la la land now in the post aughts, uh, back here, then it was a legend. I don't know. There's just a lot of mystique, especially with Beverly Hills. So you see, like he goes to Beverly Hills. That's where his friend worked at a warehouse of an art dealer where his friend Jenny works. And at first, he's just trying to, to to figure out. He's just trying to get to the bottom of it, right? Uh, I don't think he's connected all, even all those dots, other than his friend worked there. So he goes uh, to, to uh, Beverly Hills, and he checks. He he. I don't know where he first uh, gets the idea or how he pulls this off. And I'm also not sure where he gets his car from, but at some point he, so he goes and checks into the Hollywood Beverly, Beverly Hills Hotel. That's what it's called, right? And he checks in there and, uh, I don't know, there's some, I'm missing some sequence, uh, 
and he gets brought in and he goes into the police station and he's like, first of all, he's like telling, he gets, I think the first people that take him in are these Taggart and Billy, Billy Tag, Taggart and, uh, oh man. But there's two, there's a young cop and an, uh, like an older gruffer cop, uh, and they go into the station and it's like, he's like, holy cow, look at how much funding you have and how fancy the station is. And then he meets like the head of the department there. And, uh, he basically, at first, I think he tries at first, I think he like pulls a fast one. He says, yeah, I'm going to help. And I'm like on a case, uh, so I'm working, but maybe he calls his boss and, uh, yeah, like, but immediately within five minutes, the, all, two of the three main characters take a liking to him. And the third character, still a little bit gruff, uh, until he sees his, uh, like, uh, Axel has to, like, win him over. And I guess it just shows a lot of echoes of the current times, uh, uh, because it's, like, it, it kind of ingrained in the system, I guess. And, in, in, uh, like, I say, well, shouldn't you just treat me with respect? Uh, eventually he's like, first, maybe first he says he's just on vacation. And they say, oh, okay, well, uh, uh, okay, well, um, enjoy your time then. Sorry about the mix up. Also, we talked to your boss though, and he says if you're investigating anything, don't bother coming home. So, I guess what I would call that secret like, so there's a couple sequences there's like, uh, the shine of LA and then the fanciness of the hotel, and then there's a lot of comedy with him checking into the hotel and uh like whatever all the over the top uh hollywood uh, beverly hills uh bel-air stuff then there's him dealing with the problematic police department and uh overcoming that and then of course he becomes friends uh i don't know pretty quickly i think uh, uh like i don't know Trying to just think of like what makes things change, like what shifts things. But at first, there's like some skepticism, and they're, they're very authoritative figure, problematic authority figures, I'd say. Then there's a sequence either before or after this where he's looking. So he meets up with his friend Jenny. Uh, that's when he meets uh, our comic genius Bronson, of course. And then, uh, uh, so he goes to art gallery, says, hey, does, let's just catch up. Uh, he drinks an espresso because uh, they have an espresso. Like, I think it, Bronson runs the uh, espresso counter at the, art, at, the cafe, at the art gallery. And his friend Jenny is like the manager. He, then he meets the, the owner, who is this guy, Victor Maitland, which I still think is one of the best uh, villain names, Victor Maitland. And he, uh, he says, okay, this is like, you could tell just by the casting that this guy's like up to no good, but you know, he's acts all pleasant. And then Jenny says, well, nothing, I love working here. Nothing strange is going on at all. And Eddie says, no, there's something that like, I can't put my finger on and then he says, let me look around. So then he starts digging a little deeper and he gets into the warehouse and that's where he finds like, again, smuggling or something like they're smuggling bear bonds and maybe other things in the art. But he definitely doesn't have any proof. Uh, and also they're following him. Like, so then he constantly has to like, like work with the, uh, like at some point he he stops like going against the authority figures. He, he has enough fun with them that he just like gets in their car. And he start he, he, again at first it's like a like a he's kind of like trying to get them to buy into what he he's discovered, even though he's still on a hunch. And I guess it happens pretty fast, but maybe we'll see when I look up the plot. Uh, and then, uh, I guess, yeah, there's something, um, there's a big hole because eventually he finds some clue that, you know, Victor Maitland, but like not only is Mikey, but there's something else involved, uh, 
And so they start to come around on his police work, but they're still doubtful and they don't want him involved and whatever. And then there's, then there's like the big 80s action sequence at the end. I guess there probably is one like action sequence in the middle of the story. There's got to be. Uh, but like at the end, it's like uh, uh, the older cop, uh, the gruffer cop with the mustache, the um, head of the department is like, uh, like uh, he's bought in. Like he says, wow, this is great detective work, uh, but, but uh, he's not involved directly. Then there's, oh, so there's Judge Reinhold is one of the, he's the plays the younger, uh, what do you call that? Like a green or um, naive uh, Beverly Hills cop. He's an actual Beverly Hills cop. Uh, but, but, like, but he's the one that's kind of like trying to soften the other ones to be like, I think this guy has a point. And, and he's like, uh, his name's Billy. Billy, I think it, he, the other guy's Taggart and he's Billy, but he could be Billy Taggart and the other guy could have a totally different name. But so eventually those three end up, uh, there's some sort of big chase or multiple chases, and then they end up at Victor Maitland's mansion, and they have to get in there and, like, uh, get to, like, uh, so I guess maybe in the 80s, like, uh, smuggling and that kind of stuff was like, holy cow, it's like a real uh, thing. Oh, but there's, like, also, yeah, now I'm remembering other stuff from the movie they say, like, I can't believe that, like, uh. So it definitely exposes, like, a, like a embedded problems in our culture. Okay, so let's see what it says on Wikipedia, because uh, that's all I can remember. Oh, so it was produced by Eddie Murphy Productions and Simpson and Bruckheimer. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daniel Petrie Jr. wrote the screenplay. Stories by Danilo Bach and Daniel Petrie Jr. Produced by Simpson and Bruckheimer. Uh, directed by Martin Brest. Uh, I'm pretty correct on the uh, poster and the hoodie. Let's see what it says. Uh, trying to see what the poster says. Uh, like the quote, uh, he's been chased, uh, he's been chased, uh, thrown, and busted. Oh, yeah, he gets thrown out of, I think, uh, a bank or a, Eddie Murphy is a Detroit cop on vacation in Beverly Hills. But I want to kind of figure out the stuff that I forgot. Uh, John Ashton, Ronnie Cox, and Steve Burkoff are some of the, and Lisa Eli Bacher. Oh, I forgot about the music. And I don't know if the music, the music is so good, but that might be more Beverly Hills Cop 2. We'll see what it says. It came out in 1984 for the holiday season. Wow. It was released by, distributed by Paramount. 1984, I'm way off. No wonder I never saw this movie. Uh, It's 105 minutes long, so it is a quick one. I mean, comparatively now. Thirteen million to make made a three hundred and sixteen million, so I could be right. Uh, Two hundred and thirty-four in North America, and it was the highest-grossing film released in nineteen eighty-four. And that would make sense if I saw it in eighty-four and it was still in the movie theater in eighty-five. Uh, let's see. It was nominated for favorite motion picture, People's Choice Awards, uh, Golden Globe for best motion picture, musical or comedy. Academy Award for Best Screenplay. It was a blockbuster. Okay, so yeah, let's see. The plot, it goes, this is from Wikipedia. Then he meets up with his buddy, Mickey Tandino. Oh, then uh, he ended up working, oh yeah, for Jenny Summers. Uh, shows him some German bear bonds. He wonders how he got him, but chooses not to question him. Oh, yeah, they go to a bar, then they go to the big far, big bank in the sky. Uh, Axel asks for permission to look into it, but Inspector Todd says, don't worry about it. Uh, so then he says he's going to take a vacation. Oh, because it happened in Detroit, of course, yeah. 
He finds Jenny working in an art gallery, learns Mickey's ties to Victor Maitland, the gallery's owner. Oh, he poses as a flower delivery person. And that's where he meets Victor Maitland. Uh, uh, that's where, and then that's where he meets uh, Andrew Bogomil and uh, Sergeant Taggart and Billy Rosewood. Billy Rosewood, yeah, that's another really great name. John Taggart, Lieutenant Bogomil. You know, they follow him. Taggart, uh, he uses a banana to trick them. Oh, no, first he gets food delivered uh, from room service. It doesn't say, uh, I don't know how he, like, uh, pulled off the, the, maybe just put everything on a credit card. Billy and Taggart do not get along with Axel first, but then they develop a mutual respect. Uh, oh, yeah, because they sell something else. Uh, oh, because one of the things that's a contrast is that... Uh, that they try to make like uh, some of the problematic behavior they show is like a program to like that the Beverly Hills officers have to follow these rules uh, by the book uh, and that they can't think for themselves and that uh, Axel is trying to teach them, hey, you got to think for yourself and trust your instincts sometimes uh, and loosen up. Uh, okay, then... So they foil something, and then they say, wait a second, especially Ta Taggart says, oh, wait, you're like, he says, oh, cop to cop now. Sorry, I was problematic, uh, which is, well, that behavior was not okay. Okay, so then, then yeah, that's when he gets, sneaks in. He finds coffee grounds. Uh, she says, okay, you know what you're smuggling when, uh, Oh, and that they're circumventing customs. Uh, so then again, he goes to Bogomil. Uh, who Bogomil kind of buys into it, but then there's another person, Chief Hubbard, who uh, wants him out of town. Oh, yeah, he says something, something, uh, the buffet at uh, the brunch at the Beverly Hills Hilton or something. But then they say, okay, we got to go to Maitland's warehouse where there's a shipment. Uh, that's when they find the evidence. Uh, oh, then they, Maitland takes Jenny with him, uh, and they're going to deal with uh, Axel. So Axel and Jenny get caught by Maitland. Maitland's going to take Jenny, and Billy has to uh, save the day. Yeah, Taggart had given up, uh, but then uh, they come to it, and then that's when they figure it out at the end, and they get in. So I didn't miss too much. Yeah, then at the end, they say, uh, like, uh, 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 Axel says, can you smooth things over with my boss? Uh, oh, Paul Reiser's in this movie, Jonathan Bank. uh uh, Damon Wayans is, uh, oh yeah, he, wow, yeah, well, that's funny. He's, he, he's, uh, he plays a small role. Ronson been shown. Uh, let's see, 1977, uh, was like when they first started pitching the movie. Uh, luckily it sounds like a couple of people they had lined up were, they were no, uh, no, we <laughs> Definitely not uh, Eddie Murphy. I mean, famous actors, but n only Eddie Murphy could have pulled this off, I think. It did receive critical acclaim upon its release. Uh, uh, Janet Maslin of the New York Times said, uh, Eddie Murphy doing what he does best. Uh, I don't know. No one says that he had, like, range, though. I mean, they say, oh, yeah, he's fast-talking, hip, shrewd. Uh, Eddie Murphy exudes a kind of key, key, cheeky, cocky charm that's been missing the sin from the screen since Cagney was a pup. Uh, uh, Axel became Murphy's signature role. Oh, yeah, other people say, yeah, this was a flawless masterpiece. Uh, though some people said, uh, someone from the National Review said it was a contemptible film. It's got an 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, came out in the holidays at 84. It was in first place. It made $15 million in the first five days. Uh, 
and it stayed at number one for 13 consecutive weeks, returned to number one in its 15th week, uh, and tied uh, Tootsie for the most weeks at number one. So, yeah, 15 weeks is like half a year. That's at number one. Uh, so it could have been in the uh, second-run theater after it came out uh, for almost a year. And, yeah, the soundtrack had, uh, like, this instrumental song that was really popular, Axel F uh, for Axel Foley. That was by Harold Faltermeyer. Uh, and then Neutron Dance by the Pointer Sisters, which, was, holy cow, that was, um, like, a, an unbelievable song. And I think that's it, Legacy. Let's see what it says about Legacy. Oh, it, it was two sequels. I don't remember Beverly Hills Cop 3. Uh, Reinhold was in both movies. The second film had mixed reviews. It was successful in the box office. Uh, the third film, neither critically or commercially successful. Uh, Sean Ryan pitched a pilot in 2013 uh, with... Uh, Axel Foley's son, but it was not picked up, uh, Brandon T. Jackson. And in 2019, uh, Netflix licensed an option to, for a fourth sequel. So we'll see if that happens. That would be interesting. I mean, I think without Eddie Murphy, it's really tough for me uh, to think about it. But yeah, so that's a little bit about a movie I barely remember. Let me just, before I, uh, let, I'll slow it down even more, before I let you go, I'll just uh, check the entry for the other two plots. I know the first plot, or this uh, of the first, uh, like the first, uh, second movie, whatever you call it, the first sequel was uh, a, uh, like that something, like who's whoever was the lieutenant, uh, he gets uh, gone. He gets. He has to go to turn in a bear bond. But I don't know what else is there. Uh, uh, it was uh, nine, 1987, so I still didn't see this either in the theater. Uh, directed by Tony Scott, uh, it has a pretty sweet poster at sunset. Uh, let's see if anybody else is in it. Reinhold, Ronnie Cox, John Aston. Dean Stockwell, Paul Reiser. Oh, Paul Reiser's like his partner, I think, uh, in Detroit. Made less movie than the first film, uh, but still was successful. 157. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a, like, uh, oh, like, uh, oh, wait, doesn't this have, uh, is this the same movie? Yeah, Bridget Nielsen's in it. Okay, so I remember this one. Uh, it's like a, a couple of mysteries within a mystery. So, so it wasn't, uh, yeah, it, it kind of, so I guess kind of, uh, I kind of remember it, uh, Dean Stockwell. Um, and then let's see, I don't remember Beverly Hills 3 at all. So Beverly Hills Cop 3 came out in 1994. So it's a pretty long break, uh. It was directed by John Landis. Uh, they had worked together. Uh, let's see what we say. Axel Foley returns to Beverly Hills. Counterfeiters this time, who had uh, dealt with his boss. Uh, he teams up with Billy Rosewood. They go to a, a amusement park known as Wonder World. He has a lot of cameos. Uh, including Robert B. Sherman, Arthur Hiller, John Singleton, Joe Dante, Barbet, Schroeder, Peter Madak, uh, Ray Harryhausen, and George Lucas. And uh, let's see, a plot, uh, let's see. Yeah, oh, they go, yeah, you know, same kind of thing. They're on the trail. So maybe that's another thing that didn't work. I don't know. But so anyway, the first movie meant a lot to me, and it still does. And uh, so I wanted to talk about it. Uh, thanks so much, and good night. All right, I want to thank everybody who reviewed the show over on Apple Podcasts recently. Uh, Susan, KS, MG, Can't Sleep Without Scooter, Perfect Storm of Words, Repetition, Winks and Nods, Never Made It to the End Before Falling Asleep, uh, it Gives Me Creative and Vivid Dreams, Sleep Aid and Entertaining. Uh, thank you so much. Julia, 
was very honest. Did not like it at all. Not calming. And uh, so that I like that. That's straightforward, but like honest and not a, a but a nice spirit of honesty. Uh, and actually accurate. Did not even know about the subject he was talking about. That's pretty accurate. Uh, so it's just a heads. I guess if you're listening to this, it wouldn't be a heads up because uh, that uh, that's pretty common. Uh, oh my wow, says L. Uh, when I found this a year ago, I was skeptical, I saved it, but after listening to two, oh, this is uh, the other side of the coin. Uh, after listening to two minutes, I said nope. And I forgot about it ever since, until about a month ago, when I couldn't sleep. And as a last resort, I was scrolling through my phone. I turned on Sleep With Me. Well, I'm glad I gave it a chance. I swear I was asleep in five minutes. Since then, Scooter's talked me to sleep every night. I don't know how it works or why, but it does. So thank you. Uh, YT says, thanks, Scoots. I don't know how it works or why it does, uh, but it uh, is soothing and helps pass the night. Uh, Beth La La says, uh, thanks uh, for supporting uh, positive uh, action-based organizations. But I don't just listen for that. It's uh, uh, like uh, I've been listening for years and it works like a charm. Thanks, Beth. Uh, KMZ says, pleasantly surprised. I have a hard time falling asleep. I was skeptical. Tried so many similar podcasts. But when I queued up one episode, I fell asleep before it ended. Uh, Kate, uh, 1738026, uh, eight for the recent bouts of insomnia, you know, due to stuff going on. Uh, my husband suggested this podcast to give my brain a little bit of focus and direction as I was falling asleep and was super helpful. I went from lying awake for hours to falling asleep in a half hour or less. Not sure it's for everyone, but nothing is, uh, so it's really helpful for me. Uh, does a trick. Uh, that's from uh, M514GD. Perfect to serve as background noise. I normally like more informative podcasts to fall asleep to, but the stuff, the stuff I, he talks about is not super enjoyable for me. So I fall asleep before the end of the podcast. So very soothing. Would recommend and encourage people to try it out. Uh, uh, Elise said uh, the, the, the podcast uh, didn't work, uh, and let's see, I'll check a couple more. Uh, Rez says, been listening for three years nightly, uh, changed my life, uh, but it is bizarre the first few times. And I may have already read some of these. Uh, Wildflower says, I love the podcast. Uh, Franny, thanks for getting me through tough nights. And Annoyed Sleeper says, Magic. Oh, our friends at Battlebird Productions uh, sleep to it. So shout out to, to uh, everybody at Battlebird. Fixing that space-based junk. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the show. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't do it without you, uh, really. Thanks so much. And Oh, let me talk your. You want me to do that? How do you want your feet? In or out? Oh, ha- uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Half. Uh, sure. You want me to get, move any? Okay. What about if I talk that? Okay, good night. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here. And I don't know if you've experienced any of these long lines or long wait times, or if you've talked to someone in your family and they're waiting forever for their furniture to be delivered. We're talking companies that are up to four months until they can get your furniture delivered, but that doesn't happen with our sponsor, Feather. With Feather, the furniture comes in as little as seven days. Because when you see something online that you want, you want it right away. That's normal. And if you got to wait four or five months, it's like, forget about it. And you know, I've talked about Feather over and over and over again. This is furniture that changes as your lifestyle changes, as your home changes. And that's why you got to check out Feather. You know, people who live in cities move six to eight times before they hit their early 30s. And Feather is a furniture rental company designed for people who want to feel at home no matter how often they move. But they want something that's nice, high quality, stylish, and affordable. 
affordable because furnishing a one bedroom can cost upwards of six thousand dollars but with feather you could furnish a bedroom with high quality beautifully designed furniture for the cost of your monthly utility bill their delivery team brings furniture directly to your home in as little as seven days they handle all the heavy lifting so you can go from an empty apartment to a fully furnished home without lifting a finger or assembling anything and it's not just furniture they have rugs lamps wall art and now they've even added outdoor furniture and if you move to a new place with a different layout no problem you can easily swap out furniture that works for any space and this means a lot to me you know i moved a few years ago i'm probably going to move again in the next few months and feather is going to be my number one option because renting from feather you're choosing a sustainable alternative to fast furniture that won't end up in landfills so don't wait four months for furniture get your order in with feather try a new way to furnish your home right now feather has an exclusive offer just for sleep with me listeners if you go to livefeather.com and use the promo code sleep 300 you'll receive 300 dollars off your first month of their annual plan that's livefeather.com and use our promo code sleep 300 for 300 dollars off thanks everybody all right everybody it's time to talk about bombas performance socks i've been wearing them all summer long for long walks for long runs and for just walking around the house uh, doing work and lots of things can make your workouts hard extra resistance double speed going one more mile your socks shouldn't and that's why bombas performance socks are built to be nothing but comfortable and supportive bombas performance socks have taken all the amazing innovations that make bombas the most comfortable socks you've ever worn and they've added their special hex tech performance technology bombas performance socks are stitched with special moisture wicking yarn and temperature regulating vents that allow cool air to flow in and prevent overheating they come with this amazing pillow like tab to save you from blisters stay up technology a special arch hugging system and an extra layer of cushioning comfort on the bottom for the perfect amount of support they come in different styles for every sport with specific design features to help you optimize performance and keep you comfortable no matter what you're doing and like all their socks for every pair of bombas performance socks you buy they donate a pair to someone in need they've donated over 45 million pairs so far and i just love how good they feel i think it's the arch hugging technology they always stay on my feet they keep my feet cool and they keep my feet comfortable and they look good whether it's the sesame street socks or the performance socks i got the three-tone performance socks and three different pop in colors people are always saying scoots you look great in your socks and i say thank you uh, they're bombas socks so go to bombas.com slash sleep today and get 20 percent off your first order that's bombas b-o-m-b-a-s dot com slash sleep for 20 percent off that's bombas.com slash sleep and then share with me some socks in your instagram story or on twitter and let me know about it let bombas know about your socks uh so get over there, bombas.com slash sleep. You'll get 20% off your first order. Thanks, everybody.